I was supposed to be high on euphoria and dancing on a table singing euphoria to the seat to the tune of Gloria. <laughs> no one's gonna be standing like high on cocaine, sing, dancing on a table singing cocaine. So it I was wasn't. disgruntled and uh and um and I complained about it and, and somebody told Chuck I was complaining about it and the message I got back was tell the sing, say the lines like I f wrote them. <laughs> Did I say that? Hey there, Beverly Hills 90210 fans. It's now time to dive deep into an episode by episode, character by character, song by song account of the making of your favorite zip code with your host, Charles Rosen. I sit in the chair. It's one of Sandy's antiques. The whole thing breaks. Larry Mullen. He shouldn't be even in this show. I hope they're going to kill him, and they did. Pete Ferrero. up my, like, TV crush is Claire Arnold. So, I mean, she has to come on this show at this and point. And representing the fans, Lily Amaran. Ryan, I love you. I have dreamt about you. I... What? Along with many special guests. And your questions. So sit back and relax, because it's, like, totally time for the Beverly Hills 90210 Show. <laughs> Okay, well here we are, and uh, boom, Fred Mullins with us. <laughs> My brother, I haven't seen him. <laughs> um, so Melanie Rose is here, uh, representing the fans this week. We got to get you in the intro, yeah. though, right? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, can't, Fred is muted, so let me fix that real quick. How's that? Much better. There we go. So then we have Amy, and I'm going to let you say your last name because I know it's the time. <laughs> with that. Amma Tangelo. Amma Tangelo. And she is the TV gal, right? Yep. Yep. I write about television. I've been writing about 90210 from way back when. <laughs> so she's joining us here. And then, of course, Jill Novick. Tracy is here with us. Uh, Jill, how are you? How has everything wow, been going? Jill. I'm glad you, Tracy. Yeah. Okay, guys. I'm good. I'm good, considering, you know. Yes. Yeah. I'm doing well. And then Fred Mullen, who scored some of season seven. Right, Larry? Uh, Fred did, I think, 12 shows of season 11, and I yeah. couldn't have done it without him, really. So it was, a, as we know, a tough year. Um, and I sound all right. My sound sounds good. You sound great. Larry, yeah, has, sound a good. Larry has a microphone now. So I have a new microphone. Really Fred, you cry. <laughs> we, read a, we read a review. We read a review that said we need to amp up our game technical wise. So we're, we're working for everybody. here. There's and nothing. I have high definition. You can see every line in my face. <laughs> hey, I, I wanted to start this episode. Obviously, today is 9-11. Um, I didn't think it was appropriate. Uh, if we didn't mention it. So um, very tough day for everybody. And I know we all probably can share stories about where we were and all that. Um, you know, for Larry, um, what, what do you want to say about this day? Uh, you know, I was not in America. I was in Paris uh, doing a, a TV show. Uh, actually, I was scouting a strip club when I came out and Lovely. the yeah. French uh, location manager kept tapping me on the shoulder and saying to listen to the thing. And he was translating. And, you know, it was we were there for another month because we really couldn't go back. So it was a very strange time. And I you know, my feel terribly. I'm, we're New Yorkers, so we were yeah. felt deeply. Yeah, I was in living in New Jersey and uh, I dealt with it firsthand. It was a very sad day. Um, Jill, how about you? I was living in LA. Um, a friend woke me up and told me, you got to look at the TV. And I went and looked at the TV and yeah, uh, one of the worst, one of the worst days ever. I had a friend that was down there working in, on Wall Street and she was underneath uh, in the subway and she got out and had to walk with all the people over the bridge. And it was, uh, yeah. 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 So we're thinking of everybody uh, as we do this episode yes. about 90210. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, listen, I'm going to drop. I'm going to show you guys on Sunday for all the fans. I am doing a season uh, eight to ten episode with Lindsay Price. Here's a little clip from uh, that, which is going to drop on Sunday. Really, really funny story though. Um, I had approached Curtis at a club, sort of the last, the last club that um, Curtis probably was at. Like, I think I either was pregnant with Hudson, my oldest, or I just had him. Mm -hmm. And Curtis is like the most pop culture, like he doesn't know anything. Like he's like, he was, he was born down under. Right. And, um, and like he, so Ian walked up to him and said, um, we're, 
we got the same girl pregnant. <laughs> and Curtis was like, do I have to fight this guy? Like, what? Who's this guy? You know, because he didn't know. And then, and Ian's like used to being like, Ian Zirin, like everyone knows who he is. And, and Ian's like, no, no, Lindsay. And he's like, yeah, I know. And they had this, this, like, this like thing, you know? And, um, and they actually had a conversation about it because like, you know, um, Curtis and I, again, like we, you know, we got pregnant before we got married and Janet and Steve had sort of the things. So they had like this beer and they had like a conversation about it. So there you go. <laughs> that, that's uh, that's sun, dropping Sunday. That's Curtis Stone is her husband, Larry. Mm-hmm. You know who Jeff is? Yeah, so. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. This was after you. This was way, that's all no. a whole other no. world for you. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, hey, now we can dive into this. This is uh, all about Tracy today. I'm curious for you, Tracy, how, I'm sorry, Jill. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been called Tracy in a long time. Um, <laughs> um, I'm curious for you how you got into, I'm sure you auditioned for the show. How did it come to your world? Okay. Um, I auditioned for the show many times. Um, so I auditioned for the pilot for the part of Brenda. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And um, so I don't know, then I was like t- maybe 23 or something when that was, um, I had just, I think it was when I just uh, moved to LA or maybe the year, year after that. Anyway, then I also remember auditioning for a character that I think she was a blind pianist or something. Yeah. Does that uh-huh. ring a bell? Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Blind <laughs> so pianist, I have, right up her yeah. alley. Yeah, so I, I, I auditioned for that. And then I went to network for Val. And it was me and Tiffany, and I think maybe one other person, but I can't remember. I just remember Tiffany, of course, because I looked at, I, I got there and I was like, oh, well, she's going to get it. <laughs> she's on, you know, Saved by the Bell, and she was Brian's girlfriend, and she's way sexier than me, so she's going to get it. And she did. And then, um, so yeah, so by the time Tracy came along, um, I, you know, I had already done so many times. I, I don't know. I feel like maybe Aaron spoke to my manager and said, no, we really want, you know, we really think this might be the one, <laughs> this might be the time. And I went in and I remember being, feeling very confident, a lot more confident than I usually am. I remember the dress I was wearing was like this really tight, short spaghetti strap red dress. And I felt good and yeah, so that, that was it. Hey, for, for, for Larry, we had just come off of, uh, okay, I'm gonna mention her name, Susan Keats. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> right. Um, there's some you know, in, in Washington, there. I had to think about that because we, you know, we wanted to remember where we are in season seven, which uh, when we last left off, you know, Brandon had had his heart broken by Susan Keats, who was a very ambitious, you know, ach- achiever and someone kind of very much like Brandon himself. And, and, and in a way, she was better at it than he was. So we were looking for somebody softer, someone more natural without the pretense, of, you know, and just and we also had to change the venue. We could not go back to the uh, newsroom anymore because that was kind of <clears throat> already been fouled too many times. So we decided to invent the, the TV studio and CU TV. And then we uh, we cast two uh, people with long-term contracts. We had cast the, because uh, we needed another guy, we cast the, the head of the uh, TV station, the students, uh, the head of the TV station who played a character named uh, Mark Reese. Mark, Mark. Mark Reese, yes, thank you. And we cast Tracy Galian, who was gonna become Brandon's girlfriend and also the anchor woman. And she was gonna be a natural, you know, just, a, you know, a genuine person, authentic, you know, not a Beverly Hills girl, you know, as it turns out, as we see in uh, what we're going to cover on Necessary Roughness, you know, she has, you know, country roots, has Galian Ranch, which I really like, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, and it's been fun seeing how the character developed, because I hadn't seen these episodes, and going through them was really good, and she did a great job. Let me ask you this, Larry, up at the top of this. Um, we just mentioned Mark Reese, and at some point in this season, we don't see Mark Reese anymore. Yeah, you know, this is a hap- This happens in shows, uh, especially shows that run a while, because you always are in a situation, you know, people become stars and you have to negotiate their contracts and they have more leverage. And uh, and I think we, were t- we had a little bit of a conversation before us, but, you know, kissing was something we expected actors to do. And now it's a big deal when you're on stage after they have to get permission and they 
they'd frame it right. But then if you were an actress, and Jill knows this, you, you, they said, it's the script said, kiss him, buddy. You got to kiss him. And you got to, you know, you're an actress. You want to put yourself in that character and, and be a great kisser if, if it, that's what it calls for. And I think we just ran into a kissing problem. I'm going to simplify the whole thing. I think so. I'm going to make the whole thing go away. And I'm just going to say there was a kissing problem on the set. And so that character then had to find an exit. And so that, and when I say this, it's really painful for the writers because because we're doing 32 episodes a year, which no one has ever done. The whole game for us is keeping ahead, keeping ahead. And now we're told we got to go backwards and fix stuff and basically find someone to get out because there's a kissing problem. Yes. So I'm just just and I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you off the hook on that because Thanks. you know, but you do go in to to Aaron Spelling's office and find out officially that oh, there is. That, there's well, that was explosive because again, Aaron Spelling knows that we're like seven, eight episodes up and we've been busting our butts. Now he's going to tell us the kissing problem and he's got to find a way for us to really buy it. So he doesn't say kissing. He says basically something that's so heinous about the person mm. just to get us riled up. I'm not even going to say it because it's so heinous. No, don't, don't, don't. Oh, go ahead and say it. <laughs> no, I'm and I remember being with Steve Wasserman in particular for this particular character. And it's not he's the only one. This happens all the time with, with people, you know, especially again, stars, you know, they 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 want a comfort level and, and I they we want to accommodate them. We need them. So uh yeah, I went up there with Steve Wasserman and and, and Aaron told us this heinous thing about the, the, the real person. And we're going, what? We're gonna we're getting rid of this guy. And he says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we walked out of the door and went, he just totally blocked us, man. And we we fell for it. Yeah. And we did. And we, you know, and unlike Chuck, see, Chuck was a battler. Chuck would say, I don't care. You know, I don't believe you. Chuck would battle him, but I'm I'm the other way. I go, all right, we got stuff to do, I'll change it. But you know, it's just writing. What I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. That's but that's so that's in case anybody's wondering, and I'm sure one day we'll dive deeper into that whole deep, deep. The kiss we'll, go, we'll go, we'll go way deeper. Um, but so, uh, for 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 Jill, um, you get to set and you find out that you're gonna how, what do you find out? Do you find out that you're gonna be uh, a love interest of Brandon's or yes? So, and I was told that my character was there to keep Brandon and Kelly apart for another season so that they could see what was going to happen after that. So basically I knew what I was there for. Of course, I always hoped that they would keep me like find some way like, Oh, right. cause I remembered like Kathleen, I thought Kathleen was not a serious regular and then they, then she right. stayed. Right. And so in yeah. the back of my mind, the whole time I'm like, Maybe it'll be like Kathleen, sure. and maybe they'll keep me. And you know, and didn't it happened to that. Jamie too. Jamie Walters also. Oh. Sure, you know? but then look yeah. what happened. I guess yeah. it's, it's you know, it's, you know, it's yeah. just his show. It's hard to keep it together. Um, but, but you did uh, have this happen a few times this season, uh, Larry. Right, where people yes, were we in. did, we did, and uh, you know, it was a challenge, <laughs> challenge for the writers to continue uh, to go backwards. You know. <laughs> they made for uh, a lot of stuff, and uh, yeah, yeah, it was definitely good. But you know, I, I do have a saying I've, I've said before on the show. We, you know, you had to serve the show, and that's what we needed uh, her character to do. We we had a long game with Kelly and Brandon at the end of the season because we knew where we were going, and we just really wanted to break his heart. And you made him suffer, which was so good. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> it was you know he really uh, seemed to care, and it goes back and forth. It's totally unlike the Susan Keats thing. Totally. totally. Yeah, Larry, do you remember Jill aud audition? Do you remember seeing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and she was exactly what we wanted. I mean, we wanted someone refreshing and genuine, and uh, and you know, just not Beverly Hillsy, and and just someone who could be an anchor woman, that kind of you know, America's darling kind of thing, and you know, and she didn't have to be so sexy like Tiffany was, and it was just a different thing because you know, Brandon, he's looking for substance too, and and look, it was, the the thing was, and and again, the ace in the hole we had, and why you were doomed was we knew we were doing a workplace romance, which never works out. Right. right, right. We learned that last season, right, in season six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm sorry, just so, so you get told that you're going to be doing this, right? And yes. so, do you meet Jason fairly early on? Uh, I met him. I think my first day there and I was in the production office and he walked in and I was so nervous. I can't even tell you. It was, um, that was like, I, I, I heard Christine talk about um, the first day of school. Like that's what it, 
I, that was the, the, what came to my mind was, oh my gosh, this is like the first day of school. I'm so nervous. I've been watching this show for six years, right? Even though I, I've auditioned for it three other times, but this was like, I finally am here. I'm, I'm the new girl in school. Yeah. Like it was. And so, yeah, I remember meeting Jason in the production office and I remember being super nervous. And I also remember his eyes, his blue eyes were just beautiful. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Um, Susan uh, or Emma told us that she always had a crush on Jason so that when she, uh, you know, was working with him, she was sort of like drawn into into the yeah. story, you know, yeah. she yeah. Did you have I a would, uh, similar, similar, yeah. Um, you know, I can't even remember. I started to think about it, um, whether I was a Dylan or a Brandon girl. And honestly, can't can't even remember. But um, of course, I was thrilled to be working with him. And yeah, I thought he was adorable. And um, I I was I was um, sort of, but you know what? I think at that point. To be honest, I, I I think Jason was over it, you know, and I don't think that there was a lot of. I mean, I think sometimes we had chemistry, but I don't think it was like as good as it could have been. Mm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it was a you know seven season seven people came in with a you know they were tired. We had just yes. done you know three seasons of thirty two episodes uh, hours a year, wow. and people were pretty ragged. Right, um, and hey, he was also producing and directing. Yes. Which is right. where his, I think that's where he, what he cared about at that point. I'm yeah. curious for Amy, um, when you were watching this back in the day, what were your thoughts as we transitioned from six to seven? Um, you know, it's funny because I, I was watching and I really remember um, about the Tracy character, what I think I liked about, well, first of all, I loved Dylan. So I, I didn't have any confusion about who was my favorite. <laughs> 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 I, Dylan was like my first, like my first bad boy, like that ever, like the first TV bad boy, my forever TV bad boy. But what I loved about Brandon's character is I, and I loved the, the women he dated, right? He always dated the women who I thought looked kind of reminded to people like I would know or I would have gone to school with or, I, or my friends or it's like gave you that feeling that like you know it was someone they weren't they were very down to earth characters and they were not larger than life uh, than some of the other characters on the show were so I really loved that and I love I think that's why I love the Tracy character and I think you're like I don't know if we if we as viewers thought you the relationship was doomed do I think we really bought into it for that whole year that they you know, we didn't realize. You know, we didn't. I didn't. I don't remember thinking. Well, she's just here, right? To, until until Kelly gets back together with Brandon. Yeah. You know, um, also, really wanted Kelly with Dylan. So, like, I was like, I think I was like, that's great. You go off with Tracy. That's gonna be wonderful. Um, so, no, I really like. You know, I really liked it. I think I was when I went back and watched the episodes preparing for this. There was so much I had uh, forgotten, uh, and then I was like, I was saying to you before, I forgot, and then I real, and then remembered almost at the same time that of, of how much is how much happened that season. Yeah. Um, and and what it was like, I know they were in college, and how many people lived in the Walsh house? I was like, it was like a boarding <laughs> house. <laughs> and like, and seven, I was like, you know, it, 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 it saved on sets. It saved on sets. I felt really badly for Tracy that we put her in a dorm room. I, I mean, yeah. One of the episodes, I realized, oh, a guy, she's like a senior in college, and she's in a dorm room. <laughs> Actually, I wasn't. I wasn't a senior. I was oh, okay. a year younger than them. Oh, okay, then you need to. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice. It was a nice dorm. It was room. nice. Like, Personally, sweet. I liked the yeah. fact that they gave her a, a dorm room. You know, like a place that was her space. I thought she had it sitting there, right, Larry? <laughs> 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 Didn't you have somebody's dorm room from previous? season maybe just hanging around. Oh yeah it was that was Andrea's probably dorm room. Yeah, <laughs> they already built that set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I'm we have curious. to talk to we have to talk to Fred he's getting bored. Fred <laughs> yeah. not at all. No, I, I mean first of all everyone looks glorious and uh it's fun to see Jill. I, I, I haven't seen her since I watched the episode. So <laughs> yeah. Um Larry, why? How did you bring Fred into the mix of doing the, the, the nepotism? A gun, nepotism. <laughs> gun to my head. A gun to my head. No, uh, no, we had always worked together. Uh, we've mm -hmm. we've been a creative partnership since we were, you know, Fred was a, you know, since he was a high school dropout, uh, and yeah. uh, he's a yeah. pure musician, and uh, we've always done stuff. So it was a great pleasure to be able to bring him in. You know, season seven going into it, there were a lot of changes, as we said, and a lot of the, you know. 
people were, were gone and the people were, you know, it was just a different year. So we needed uh, new things. And uh, I was really fortunate because I, I had a good shorthand with Fred because, you know, basically, the, you know, in the composing thing, just to quickly see it. I mean, we see all these moments like let's just take the first episode that Fred did, which was uh, Unnecessary Roughness. You know, that whole thing, we get into the mood of the opening titles where he's basically it's kind of like a running on empty track. Did you watch the thing, Fred? It was pretty. I thought it was a pretty good. Yeah, track. No, I, I refreshed my memory, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, because Larry and I literally, uh, um, you know, when he was in college and I and I was whatever, 14 years old and um uh, you know, but a a, 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 a musician already. Um, we had wrote songs together and we've been sort of best friends and collaborators on many levels for all these years. And then uh, I produced records for years. And then in 85, I was based out of Canada again. And I started to compose for TV and film. And in 87, I had a, a, a big change in my career where I got some very successful TV series I was scoring, which you know, I never expected myself to be a film composer. It was the exact opposite of who I am, but mm. it was a great way to make a living and I did pretty well with it. And by the time that 90210 uh, came calling, thanks to Larry, I, I really was a pretty well-known entity uh, as a TV and film composer. So uh, it wasn't like he had to really, you know, uh, uh, convince them. I, right. I, I really was, I really was someone who had a, a pretty good run. But it's interesting, um, one of the big series that I had done uh, from 87 uh, till 90 was a series for Paramount called Friday the 13th, the series. And it, mm. wasn't, the, it wasn't the Jason horror movies. It was a, more like a Twilight Zone every week. And it ran for three years. And it gave me a lot of, uh, of background in writing suspense uh, music. And so, in unnecessary roughness, you've got the stalker, and you've got all those scenes, and that was really easy for me to draw upon what I had been doing for for years on other TV series. So that episode, particularly when Larry gave that one to me, that was really easy for me because I knew how to make the tension and and the the drama. Well, what about the kissing? <laughs> oh, there was no kissing. Oh, no, actually, there was kissing. No, that's it wasn't Tracy. There was, it wasn't, kissing no, in Tracy, the haystack. No, she was yeah. drunk in that episode. That's I mean, I, I think, I have to say, okay, we don't have Semel here. I was kind of delaying because he de uh, yeah, delivered her into so. the universe. But Who? I, I felt episode. like a little bit yeah. watching this for myself that we had kind of let her down a little bit. I didn't really like some Who? of the moves. The, the writers had let the, the character down in the delivery of the character. It just felt a little bit um, could have been better, and you know. Uh, and so I was going to kind of get on David Semmel about that a bit, but he's not here now. <laughs> but but anyway, you know, again, it, it played through, and uh, like I said, we needed to launch that character, and she was adorable, basically. And that's that was the basic thing about that episode. We wanted to just have someone who had no, who was not worried about perception, was just basically, uh, you know. And then we find out a country girl because then we that's episode four in the season. Yeah, that's episode disappearing. sixteen. We're talking yeah. about disappearing. disappearing act. Disappearing right, act. Disappearing act. Right. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I was that's so disappearing. Nervous. And then, then episode sixteen. So that's twelve episodes later before you sleep with Brandon, which right. is pretty yes. good. A lot of girls don't make twelve episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I told it a long time. Uh, keep me uh, in that bay. But then that's where we really see her, and that's the episode I think we really uh, get to appreciate the character. We understand her background and stuff, and uh, and yeah. see, you just see that she's a country girl, which is a wonderful some character we never had. Uh, Brad Brad says he had a crush on Tracy. Oh, so that's very nice. That's nice. Yeah, right, and then mm -hmm. uh, Dana says Melanie Rose is her favorite. There's Melanie Rose right there. <laughs> <laughs> and Brian is loving the insight of Fred as a composer. So these are some of the oh. things people are saying. Um, I'm I'm just curious, uh, uh, Jill. What were some of the things that you shot first? Do you remember what some of the scenes were? Uh, I'm sure it's disappearing act, but I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, and I think it was. Um, I think it was all TV studio stuff, and I was so nervous. I, I, I when I honestly I went back and watched that one and was just like, oh my god, you were terrible. I thought I was terrible just because I was so nervous. You know, it just was like, yeah. Um, you were playing a nervous character. 
Well, um, but the, yeah. well, part of the story in this appearing act is that you are nervous, right? That yeah, you're, yes. yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I think right. that, you know, yeah. yeah. It, it definitely, I was, I guess. That's it acting. It yes. moves, it, it moves exactly. too fast. The, some of the beats in that story move too fast. I, I just, uh, you know. The thing, the thing that was hard for me that I found really interesting was the newscasting stuff because I had never had to speak directly to camera before. I'd never done any of that. And so that is what got me nervous. It, it was that part of it. Interesting, which is what yeah. also for your character was yeah. nervous speaking yeah. on camera. Yeah. yeah. And then there's all those great scenes with you and Mark and uh, Brandon at the bar. Drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like even that, when I watched it, I was like, oh my God. It was not, I didn't think it was good, but all I could remember was sitting there and just feeling the nerves, you know, and just wanting to do really well. And I don't know. It yeah, was, it was hard. Um, but we could talk about what unnecessary roughness. That's the yeah. That's I think unnecessary awesome. roughness things really come alive. I mean, you, you go there and you see the character and you see Brandon's, you know, what he likes about her. Again, it's just the exact opposite of Susan Keats. It's just mm -hmm. not someone who's like career driven. She just she's in the moment basically, and and you know she appreciates the country stuff. They have a whole thing with the horse, and I mean we got the cockamamie guy Sam. I feel bad Sam. about that. Oh. That is a little bit similar to, uh, oh, to what we did with Susan oh, Keith and Jonathan. So I didn't feel great about that seeing that for myself. I felt, oh. like, uh, but then again, you know I, I've got reasons, but I'm not going to tell them. Um, <laughs> Larry, wait, I've got to ask this question. Who did you create, Tracy? Who who created Tracy? Who well, gets I mean, 30 the 30 bucks? The, the, <laughs> John Eisenbrath was the first one to pen the character, but we had created the character oh. and basically gave him, you know, the premise of what we, you know, what we were looking for. I mean, he had to deliver the thing. He just happened to end up in that script. And uh, no, uh, I think she's asking for her character, Tracy. Yes, Tracy. Was Tracy, Tracy yeah. Galleon appears for the first time in a John Eisendraft script, so he gets the character. Thirty bucks. That's how the okay. game works. <laughs> every 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 time, you know, we all fight for that, but it just fell that way. Sometimes, right. you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I had good. Mark. I had Mark. Okay, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> I picked the wrong one. <laughs> this was a big debate, and last uh, on Wednesday's show, Larry, you weren't with us. I know. Us. I know. I, we shouldn't we talk, talk about, about it. That off, off it's air. off the record, I think, at this point. You know, yes. shouldn't get out to the airwaves. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So, uh, but this is, I think this is a great episode for Jill. I think that, are you finding your way in this character now when you get, by the time we get to Unnecessary Roughness? Yes. Yes. Very much so in, in most ways. Although I did, I'm not quite sure how, how much Tracy the newscaster gelled with Tracy the cowgirl. I don't, I don't know, but Yes, because I, again, it was the same kind of thing as the dorm room. Like, oh my gosh, they're they're doing a whole episode where if, if Tracy gets to go home to her, you know, and so that was really great, and it was really fun also because Jason and I got to like you know go on location in Thousand Oaks for the day, and it was it was fun. It was it, it was it was really nice to see that she had a life before she got. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, we had we had a lot of episodes to go still, so we need to keep that going. And then yeah. Fred had to Fred had to score the after sex the uh, the morning though. Oh really? Yeah. That must have to reach re, uh, reach deep for that, Fred. Or did you have to the <laughs> morning after uh, when they get up? No, I, I, I hate to tell you, you know, but um, <laughs> after about a thousand episodes scored, um, yeah, there we are. You know, yeah. I have no real deep recollection except that I was. You know, the way I composed a, a score was uh, um, I'm a performer by nature, so I would improvise as I watched the scene with my keyboard, and then I'd overdub, and I would, you know, create the, the sound and the, sc the scope of what I was doing in that s scene, that score, of that moment. Um, but there were so many that I can't give you the kind of uh, important uh, uh, revelations that you want. But again, you know, you try to be sensitive to the moment and uh, and on top of it you know uh, you're very much every every cue i wrote and we're talking thousands and thousands of them um every cue i wrote was written to make sure i pleased the product the, and the people and, and the director the show. And the producers and, yeah. You know, yeah i, I was going to say you know part of the process is fred would sit down with you know, I, I think it was us or or, or the uh, or Kenny Miller who was the music guy, and this yeah, and I would the, fly the in every, every episode. Would be spotted, so you'd go through the film and go. The cue starts here, 
bam, bam, <laughs> you out here, starts mm. here, out here. So you basically what's called spot the picture for, for music and effects also. But the, I mean, the goofy part, part was that I was in Toronto because I'm a dual citizen and, and uh, was based out of Toronto, but because Larry was in LA and because I was an American, I could go back and forth. So I would come in literally for a day just to have a two hour spotting session because Kenny Miller uh, refused to do it long distance. So I would fly in every two weeks and spot the show, which is where you would, you know, we'd watch the show and, and I would say, or Larry would say, or Kenny would say, well, we'd like some music underneath this. And, you know, you definitely have to be here for this. And then I would say, well, yeah, but maybe not here. And, and yeah, I'd make my notes and I'd go, I'd go back to Toronto and I'd write the show and, and, and literally, uh, I think we would FedEx the mixes to uh, LA. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Sherry Weiss, our good friend, asks for Jill, did it feel like you were double acting when you had scenes with Tracy at the CU TV anchor desk? You had to play Tracy, but you also had to play Tracy as the TV. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was hard. That that definitely was the hardest part of the job, was doing that. I remember there was a, a, an episode where I was like at, at the school doing it, and at any time that I had to like look directly in the camera and do that, it was very nerve wracking for me. <laughs> and I do think I think I I got a lot better as I went along. You know, you get more comfortable the more you do it. So yeah. Uh, do you remember doing some of this with Jason? These these uh, these beautiful yeah. touching moments between the two characters. I do. I well, one of the reasons I really do is because I I used that scene on my reel for a while. So, <laughs> so, so I saw it like over and over and over again. You know. Yeah. Um, that, again, that was like a really great episode because we got closer just it was just the two of us there and of course sam but um you know so it was really it it, yeah. it, it was fun and 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 it gave uh me a chance to really sort of dig into the character a little bit more with the whole horse i was afraid of horses i was going to ask you that did we ever ask you that question before i don't, we, uh, I don't think anybody or? asked i don't think anybody asked if they well, probably should have done that if they did i probably would have been like <laughs> oh it's fine but well, but I, I, I had to like pet the. I was like in the th stall with the horse, and then had to come out. And I remember the the horse kind of went like that. And I saw I saw it when I watched the episode, and I was like, ah, you guys. <laughs> like I was nervous about the horse. But well, Wednesday you know. we learned Christina Lee doesn't know how to play guitar. Dylan doesn't That's know right. how to surf. And, and I, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm afraid of horses. The worst one is when you, you assume someone can drive a car. You know, <laughs> they, they actually can't. I, I had a situation where you know the actor is supposed to drive up in front of like a sports arena and get out you know in a hurry, and he, he did all that, but he forgot to put it in park. So the car yeah. was going right at the camera. And that is, was, is that nine hundred two one zero or somewhere else? No, that was a movie Borderline Normal. We were in Regina. Oh, that's Saskatchewan. hilarious! Very yeah. good movie. That script got me in my job on Beverly Hills 9021. Oh, very cool. Um, all right, so let me show, I have a scene here. I think I have a scene I, I pulled. Um, this happens. I found in the refrigerator. It's an incredible present. You like champagne? Of course. And the answer is yes. I'm sorry, I must have missed something. What was the question? I couldn't help it. I found it in the drawer. That's why you asked me to get a t-shirt, isn't it? I love you. What's wrong? This isn't for me. Trace, um... Beginning of the end. What show is that from? I think that's, that's actually ring. from my. That's with my this ring. With this ring. Mm -hmm. I think. I think that's actually she finds the ring in the episode prior. I think I had to dig oh. through. My funny yeah. Valentine. I think yeah. So. Yeah. Right. yeah. I wasn't from right. with this ring. No. Yeah. But I mean, again, you know, <laughs> it's pretty good stuff, though. I, I'm very proud of this uh, this storyline. Uh, thank you so much for for being part of it, uh, Jill and, and Fred. But yeah, I mean, we really, you know, again, doing 32 episodes and keeping this this crazy, all these little convolutions al al alive, and and all these misreads where he thinks she thinks, you know, it's 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 interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Being now, I'm appreciating it more. Emily Robinson says that was a tough moment. And, it was. Uh, and Robin yeah. says it was heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah. And so the, so the next show, though, uh, with this ring. So, but but you but Brandon returns the ring in this one. He kind of recommits to you. Love yeah. I think he goes. He goes to some Nazi uh, uh, jewel. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he does. He does. He goes to um, some really like some uh, some blonde-haired Nazi jeweler. You know that's Jason, right? Fred? What's that? No, no, I'm saying, but he goes to a jeweler. Yeah, that's yeah, right. He, that's Jason. Jason. he plays two parts. <laughs> what? Yes. <laughs> yes. I, I, you know what? I just watched it a little bit today, and I'm like, no, what a fantastic job. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like one of my favorite to get as far from himself as he could get. I mean, it was, it was like some, it was Han something from uh, the Black <laughs> Forest. That's right. <laughs> um, so, Larry, I guess my question is: You knew this whole season was about um, Brandon and Kelly. Yes. And well, not I shouldn't say that because you know, again, we did cast this other gentleman to start the season with as Kelly's boyfriend. We were basically going to work uh, Mark Reese uh, into. Uh, into Kelly's life, you know, he was going to be the real blue blood, you know, like the, you know, the Nantucket guy, the, re, you know, beyond Beverly Hills in a certain way, you know, real old money, you know, Orange County, probably more likely, you know, Reagan's kitchen cabinet kind of thing, the Dart family, uh, people we knew, um, and it just didn't work out because you know the kissing problem. Jenny so, didn't like <laughs> um, do you remember doing that? I think that's a David Semmel scene. The uh, my. Oh, maybe yes. David did my Friday Valentine. Yeah. Oh, okay. What a beautiful job! But yeah, David did uh, also Judgment Day, also which uh, Tracy was in. He did three episodes with Tracy was in, and so I know he wanted to be here. But yeah. So, so do you remember yeah. when you got to you, you? You know, you knew that you were coming down this pathway, right? Like that we're gonna. Ha do you know that this is gonna be how it's gonna play in it, like with the ring and this whole nine, or are you are you learned that as you're reading the scripts each, sort of each week as they present them to you? Yeah, I didn't know about the ring. I, I learned it as 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 we went along. Yeah. And do you remember sort of shooting that scene? I do, because I remember we, we I remember there was a scene in the bed before that, and That's right. yeah, it was you know it, yeah it was like she was so happy, everything was going the way she wanted, you know. So I do yes, I remember I remember us filming in his bedroom in the bed. And then I remember <laughs> that uh, finding the ring. I, I can't. I don't. And that's about all I remember about it. I just remember that, like, yes, she's she's feeling happy and great, and they had a great time. And yeah. 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 Uh, Chase says we need a the kissing problem T-shirt. <laughs> 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 a great idea, Chase. I couldn't stop. You guys, man, yeah. I'm glad I didn't you, have a kissing problem. Uh, I have some notes on, the, on your kissing. Uh, I have good kissing oh, in the uh, in, no, no kissing oh, problem. Things. You had some excellent kissing and uh, un unnecessary roughness. I thought. So this is know. this would be no. Like Amy said, this is no kissing. No problem. kissing problem. <laughs> no yeah, kissing I, I do problem. want to say kissing in, problem with circle flash. <laughs> you know, I always want to remember Phil Sabbath because Phil Sabbath was a big part of this of this ring story. He wrote. I believe with this ring, and certainly wrote you know the last four episodes of this season with me, uh, or rewrote them, and he's no longer here. So I always like to remember and Fred it, and, and oh. Phil and I were were friends and colleagues together in Toronto. We had our own theater, and uh, we loved him so much. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, he had a lot of the heart of this stuff and a lot of the crazy stuff uh, was also. Because I know we're going to get to Long Goodbye, but I, I do want to tell you that we did write that song, the Royal Canadian Love Song. In case you're asking. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll let you go. Oh. I was gonna say, um, there's also some episode in the mix of all this where Tracy meets uh, Jim Walsh, right? In in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. Yes. Right. I know we didn't watch yeah. that, but I've had right. some people asking me about working with because you're a fan of the show, and then working with James Eckhouse. What was that like for you? That the, uh, it, it was really fun. I gosh, I'm so bad. I really don't remember specifically about him, 
but I do remember being like, oh, great, I get to meet the dad, you know? Right, um, yeah. Yeah, I, gosh, I, that's about all I remember that's about okay. it. No, he's yeah. not going to be offended. He's okay. He's okay. <laughs> <laughs> He'll handle it okay. Okay, then yeah. we get into, we get into uh, Heaven Sent, guys. Um, wow. You know, it was good to see this one. Uh, again, I just want to see who wrote that one. Um, yeah. So I, I have to give credits here. You know, it's really important, I think. Uh, so that was written by John Welpley and directed by Anson Williams. Anson, uh, who, yeah. Who everyone yeah. knows as Potsy from Happy, Potsy. Happy Days. He had done a bunch for us. He's a wonderful director, had a nice touch. In it. And this episode, I thought, really cooked and uh, had some lovely stuff in it and, and had this callback character where I was getting a character payment. Okay, so I brought the character back. That's oh, for the 30, for the 30 that's hours. I brought, I brought my, my, uh, my Ia Campbell back playing the character of Mariah. Right. But really were great. It, you know, again, we were looking for ways to kind of subtly separate the Brandon and Tracy. And you put now, he brings some other woman there, and Kelly's a friend, befriends her. And right. just, you know, she just kept grinding it. It was just, you know, you got to keep grinding this stuff. And it worked great. And she was lovely in it. And, and we know our heart goes out to Maya Campbell, who I think is still with us, but she's really on the streets. Uh, of Atlanta somewhere, and you know she's has a terrible addiction problem. And oh no! Tries to find her and all you really YouTube. see is a, a terrible YouTube video about. Yeah, her. you can pull that up on YouTube. Yeah. Um, oh no! Yeah, so bring that, that's yeah. A sad story. That is sad. Uh, maybe uh you know if people in Atlanta you know they they know more than we do probably. Probably. But yeah, that episode I thought really. Uh, Again, you know, we kind of, you know, took a chance here because we're always looking for new music stuff. So we said, yeah, what about new age music? You know, what the heck? We haven't right. done that. So we, we have a harpist. And uh, and of course, we have your attitude, which is like, what a bunch of bogus bullshit. And right. which, again, it helps it because Brandon's trying to believe it. And so it just, I thought worked really, really well. I was very happy with the episode. It also totally tracked that Kelly would, would go for that, right? That totally fit with her character, too. You weren't surprised that she was. Like she, she was in a cult, right? Like she totally tracked that she was, she was going totally aligned with her history. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, totally aligned with her personality. Yeah, yeah, that's very funny. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess for do you remember that episode, Jill? When you rewatched that, what did you think of that? I mean, you're very cold to poor. Uh, and he, yeah, and, yeah. I that that kind of bothered me. That 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 I feel like yeah. Um, there was a time when she says something really snarky. When I, when Tracy says something really snarky, and I was like, "Whoa, why are you doing that?" And, you know, I like the jealousy just really took over, and you know, like I remember in the in the first scene, she's all I'm smiley and how oh, nice to meet you and everything. But then the second Kelly comes in, it's like, oh no, for you know. Um, just the way we planned it yeah, yeah so so yeah i mean you know i do i remember as the actor being jealous <laughs> and like you know kind of through the whole thing just like no <laughs> no you know yeah. no he should like tracy he should love tracy <laughs> you know yeah. That must be the the Brandon Walsh uh, thing because Emma said the same thing, Did Larry. She? If you remember that, right? She said, I she know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, the, uh, yeah, you know, she didn't I, remember, want to go. I remember shooting the scene outside when I was, uh, you know, and um, so when she was talking. I remember, I, I remember like the other stuff you know <laughs> like i remember anson and I remember, yeah I, I, like the not actually filming stuff well, but just the kind of hanging out stuff you know what i noticed in this episode you become a little bit of a mean girl you just kind of yeah. hang out with the mean girls a little bit like valerie yeah. and you uh, yeah. yeah which believe me that that actually was a good place to go because you could you could have gotten picked up for that you know the, the mean girls were a they were a whole other bunch, but yeah, I mean, yeah. So she was getting integrated into the group there, which was good, but you know, it was the mean girl. But. I think in that episode, one of the episodes you go and confront uh, Kelly, right? What was it like working with Jenny? The long goodbye, yeah. I mean, yeah, that well, was that the one when I go and I, I think so, yeah. Hey, yeah. Did you know that he still had the ring? And mm -hmm. right, yeah. um, well, that's yeah. with this ring, that's with this ring, which, with this ring. That was one of my favorite scenes. Um, that was also on my reel. <laughs> um, you know, I didn't get a chance to work with Jenny very much. It was kind of like that episode, especially, 
and maybe a, a, another one in the TV studio. Anyway, I didn't, I didn't work with her very much. I loved working with her in that scene. Um, that, that's what I remember. I feel like she made me um, sort of a little more relaxed and I really liked the chemistry between us. I, I, I really liked that scene. I love it. I think it's yeah. I think that the two of you just work so well together in in that. Um, yeah. um, go ahead. Somebody said. I was say, it's two nice. It's two nice women too. I mean, I feel like that's the thing too. Is that they're not. It wasn't a rivalry of like the mean girl. I mean, no, she, was like, being a little, yeah. she was a little bit of me in this, but but in general, they're two of the yeah. really kind characters on the show who both yeah. you know both like Brandon and and in, in your and Tracy's defense, she had just found him with a ring for another girl. Like it, it was it was a time to be a little mean girly, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus, with his reputation, I mean, there's always the specter of Kelly was hanging around him mean, for right. season after season. So, um, uh, what, you made him suffer. What was um, Tiffany like to work with Jill? Tiffany was great. She was she was uh, very professional. You know, she knew her stuff. Um, I remember her flirting with the crew a little bit. <laughs> That's one thing I remember. But no, we had a great time. I remember uh, that episode when we were in the mall. It was like Christmas time, and she, she and I were shopping. And then, like in between, like setups, we went to Old Navy or something, and we were trying on jeans in the dressing room. I remember that. That was fun. <laughs> well, it was fun. Um, but did you tell her that you were almost you were you were up for? Uh, she knew. Yeah, we were there. To, we were at the we were at the yeah. audition together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Fascinating stuff. Um, <laughs> I also love Larry the scene that with Brandon and Kelly at the end of uh, Heaven Sent. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Jason did a beautiful job directing this thing. Uh, and Fred, uh, Fred scored this thing. Yeah, you saw that scene, Fred, where the uh, you see them walking away from each other, like as an overhead shot. You're talking about that one there. Yeah, uh, that's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a beautiful setup, and you see that you know this kind of not star cross love is the exact opposite, but they just can't connect. I mean, they just just not in the right place here or in the, in the universe. Or, and uh, I can't remember why we got rid of Maya. So I was going to ask though. that. I, I don't remember. Did she not show up for She work? didn't show up to the I new, mean, very new age festival. Sudden, we say, funny. oh, yeah, she had to catch an earlier plane. We gave that. I'm going like, she had to remember. What happened there? Yeah. I don't know. I, I It was a mystery to me. I'm thinking like, that just seems odd to me. I wouldn't have written that. I would have had a goodbye. I mean, yeah. Right. Right. the only thing I can say is maybe we ran long and had to cut the goodbye scene out or there was one more scene. I can't remember. Could be. I, mean, I, yeah. I think I did write the thing with Phil, I think. Um, hey, uh, Jill, what is it like working with Jason when he's directing? Because that's a that's different, right? He's acting when you're acting with him is one thing, but then he's acting and directing you. What is that like? Um, what I can remember, um, I think I, again, I talk about professional. You know, he he's very professional, um, very like I I felt I trusted him. You know, I felt um, like I was in good hands. Yeah. That's, that's really all I remember. I just know, I, I, and also like, okay, this is what, this is where he is at right now. You know, this is what's getting him jazzed up, not Brandon, but directing. Yeah. yeah. And then we do get to the long goodbye. I'm going to show this scene as well. The, the I was going to say, that was uh, Les Sheldon, and it was a script credit to Ken Stringer, who was our first AD. Yeah. Like I said, I'm pretty sure Phil, Phil and I uh, did lots of rewriting on this too. It's really a a powerful episode, I thought. Yeah, I think it's one of the best ones of season seven. All right, yeah. here's the scene, the opening, I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, that's, that's such good dialogue, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I, uh, you know, it's devastating. We've all been there. It's uh, not a ha happy conversation, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, it's a terrible thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean... Um, but it was honest too. I liked that. That it was yeah, honest. Yeah, I, and I thought you know, I th thought it was it was really good. Um, this episode, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. But I mean, she doesn't give up. That's the thing about Tracy. Now she kind of goes around and she goes to it. Valerie, and, and they keep working Brandon a bit, and uh, you know, it, it 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 becomes hard in this thing. Uh, it, part of this thing in this episode also, which I had forgotten about, and was the talent show which we <laughs> yeah. had this whole you know because again those kids are yeah. in their final year of college and we got to make up this whole talent show you didn't get to the talent show but i did want to point out and fred is yeah. a big part of this too but phil 
Fred and I wrote the sketch song, Royal Canadian Love Song, which, you did. Donna <laughs> played, which is phenomenal. And we do we do make about 12 cents a year on that. I was going to say, we make about $15 a year. I, wow. oh, you are. Wow. <laughs> Where's my hot that, dog? That was so much fun watching that. That was Yeah, I hilarious. thought it was great. And then the Corey whole thing, was you know, hilarious. She, well, she was. And then the whole too. thing with her mother, uh, you know, because we had Catherine Cannon on the show and she's terrific. And yeah. seeing her work again, she's going to come back on October 4th. I got to go send a note out to her. But it's just great. And again, part of the show and maybe the reason that people like Amy and Melanie love the show is we keep bringing back the rich history. So if you keep watching the show, you get rewarded. There's an equity in being a long term watcher because we never forget anything, at least until season seven, where we bring stuff back. You bring back Donna's affair with, you know, that goes back to season yeah. three, right? Yeah. The Village right. Hotel. I mean, um, and we just keep bringing those strings back. And then the other thing I have to say before we get back to Jill, not to tell me on horn, but I had totally forgotten that we had really bought into this. We created Dylan's character without having Dylan. Yes. And that was, I was really say, great. Dylan wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, we made this work. I'm going, oh my God, Dylan's coming. I can't even. Yeah. <laughs> when did this happen? I mean, we kind of threw it out. Maybe he would come back. You know, no, we, yeah, you know, it was still possible, but we created the whole you know, illusion that he was living with Brenda and again, create this. Again, the triangle there without even having two parts of the triangle. So I just thought that was great. We sold that, and I was really – that's really what I was excited about. Seeing. Um, I want to ask you a couple things uh, before we get to the Jill storyline. The Dylan thing, do you guys ever reach out to Dylan? I mean, that's season seven now, right? Yeah. So there's been some time since he's he's gone. Do you guys ever reach back around and say, hey, Luke, do you want to come back and do this? do a, do a thing? Oh, it's definitely a conversation, you know, wouldn't it be great? I mean, like, you know, just come back for an episode, just we'll pass through in the airport. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, we went there. But, you know, it was at that point he was still, you know, finding his career. And, you know, there are things yeah. he wanted to do. He had, you know, left the show for, you know, reasons and wasn't ready to come back. I think as a Kathleen Robertson fan, this scene with Claire singing the song is so beautiful and it's hard to believe it worked the scene, you know i Kathleen, can't believe it worked this is the scene and the storyline that i want to talk to you about on the show this 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 thing with her mother and uh, yeah. and and the, the touching stuff with ian in the you know it, 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 she's such a beautiful actor you know we, we had big plans we had big plans <laughs> uh, i'm gonna let you sit there on that um but for jill do you remember um lee this was the you know beginning of the end here or the end I guess. Yeah. Um, do you remember shooting some of these last scenes with Jason? And yeah, it was, yeah, it was really sad. It was really sad for me because I knew that that, that was it. You know, um, I'll tell you what I do remember is we were doing double ups, and I was in both shows at the same time, and both of my last scenes. Um, I was celebrated. They brought me, they, they both, I think both crews, I had a cake, mm. you know, goodbye, we're going to miss you kind of thing. I was given gifts, like clothes that I wore on the show with like a 90210 patch in it, you know, like that's, so nice. that, that's what I remember. It was, was so, it was so lovely. And, 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 you know, I have some Polaroids from that day where like a picture of the cake on um, one. It, that was, you know, it was emotional enough just to be acting those scenes that were so emotional. Um, but but what I really remember about it was the send off. And it was just, mm. it was so nice. It really was. Now this is, uh, Melanie's gonna ask some fan questions, but just, I don't know if this is one of them, but um, they did, this is past Larry's time they do bring you back in uh yes. in the eighth season right yeah. They, yeah. Hawaii. The, yeah. Yeah. yeah so tell me how that call came and okay um sorry larry so <laughs> that call that call so yeah i was done right um and i at tori and i actually became really really good friends during that season and I don't remember if I found out from her or whether I got the call first, but they said, Hey, they want you to come back and do the opening of the season in Hawaii. Do you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I was so excited. I had never been to Hawaii before my character never really got to say goodbye to anybody. We never knew what happened to her. 
and it was amazing. It, it, it was like a dream come true, especially because um, Tori was terrified to fly, and um, she was so excited that I was coming so I could like hold her hand through the whole flight and everything, um, which I thought was really funny when I was watching the reboot. She was flying on the plane, and then it got brought up later on that she had a, a fear of flying. But <laughs> well, Aaron she was really famously did. Afraid of it. Oh, really? Aaron, oh, Aaron was famously, he never flew. He oh, even my... owned his own rail cart at one point so he could go to Vegas. Oh, and buy wow. No way. Well, that, that must be where she got it from. But yeah. Yeah, definitely. So... No. no, the story that he would tell was that he was uh, supposed to be flying back from World War II, where he was a soldier, supposedly. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I think he was, uh, at least, you know, not at the front, but he was a soldier. And the plane that he was supposed to be on went down. And his mother was so upset that he promised his mother that he would never fly again. Oh, wow. Okay. Told. Mm. Yeah, so Hawaii was amazing. That was amazing. And yeah, I did not know it was going to happen. We finished at the, you know, I don't know, when, when we finished, like May or something. And then mm -hmm. and then it was summer. July would be uh, late it was July. July, July. Late July, August. And yeah, nice. so I had a few months of not, you know, just thinking it was completely over. And then I got that really nice surprise. Yeah. Renee B says she loved getting to see Tracy again and that she was happy and settled or settled and happy. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah that was nice. They did that for you, though. You it know, was you really you had a nice. nice landing. You had a nice I landing. I think the top of season yeah. eight is not as bad as uh, people, you know, think. It's, there's some interesting things. There's that whole Emma thing, which one day we'll, we'll explore that, I think. Um, okay, Melanie Rose has got some questions from the fans for Jill mm -hmm. and maybe Fred as well. Uh, what, you, what, do, what you got? Well, um, we did cover a lot of questions, but um, we did want to revisit if it was the writer's intention for her to be hurt by Brandon from the beginning. Um, and we discovered you were a placeholder, so that answered a lot of fan questions. <laughs> Everyone's happy to hear that. Um, and how do you feel that you're similar to Tracy, the character in real life? Uh, did you feel that you could relate to her? Was it a stretch for you to play that character? Tell us a little bit about that. I think, um, like I've already said, the newscaster stuff was a bit of a stretch for me, but not, you know, not a huge stretch, but just a little bit different from what I'd ever done before. Um, and then the rest of it, I, I, I think that it was pretty close to me. Like, kind of what Larry was talking about before, just kind of, you know, an authentic person who wasn't really 90210, like Beverly Hills. That was just real and honest. Mm -hmm. I would say that's me, kind of. Nice. Right? Well, it yeah. came across very nicely. Um, there were a lot of questions about the Hawaii episode, so we, oh. we covered all of that. It was a really great way to wrap things up and give you yeah. some closure, so I think people really appreciated that. Um, there are a lot of questions about working with Tiffany. Um, people liked your relationship. You know, you said she was very professional. Uh, do you keep in touch with her or any of the other cast members? No, I am uh, I'm friends with Jason on social media. Um, but no, I have not seen or spoken to any of them in a really long time. Okay. You know, I mean, I stopped, I stopped acting, um, I would say like around 2003 and uh, went back to school and like kind of went in a whole different direction. So I never really saw them much, you know, I mean, I saw them a little bit like right after I was friends with Tori for another probably six months after Hawaii. Um, and then, you know, it's, that's what happens. You work on a show, you become like a family, and then you're not on the show anymore, and you just drift apart. Yep, this yeah. off a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to ask Amy um, for, you know, wh what do you think, looking back on the season seven story arc of the whole, like, sort of like what happened and whatnot? What, do, what is your thoughts on season seven? You know, I was someone who I think, for me, I, I just loved the show and I did love all 10 seasons. So I, for me, there's like no bad season of 90210. There's no bad episodes of 90210. I agree with you. I mean, like, I always just say, like, even the bad episode of 90210 is still probably one of my favorite things. I just really yeah. liked the show. Uh, when, I, when it ended, I wrote this article about, at the time, I've now been married more than 10 years, but at the time I said that... Uh, it was the longest relationship, consistent relationship I'd had because it'd been 10, 10 years with a, 10 years relationship with the show. Um, so no, I love it. I mean, I think uh, what struck me, what I'd kind of forgotten about seven, season seven, is how many people were gone. 
Like mm. all of a sudden I was like, wait a minute, where's Andrea? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like I'd forgotten that how many people were gone. I think I'd forgotten the sheer uh, depth of how many, you know, there's, you know, I think particularly now with the way TV is, and there's like 10 episodes and you just, it's such a different beast sometimes right now that you think about the sheer volume of episodes now to an out, out per season, like how much was covered and like the sheer just like story arcs that were covered in a one season is kind of mind blowing. Like, especially when we went back and watched like what, season five, I mean, episode five and then the finale, how much was just covered, you know, just a huge story. Like, like, like we were talking about, like they have an age storyline. They had, which I, again, I think the show also was always in the forefront of being educational. That age storyline at that time, I think was yeah. very educational. Yes, was. A lot of like, it's yep. really, the show, I always felt like the show bore the brunt of its responsibility of the viewers well. Like it had a lot of younger viewers and I thought it always took that responsibility very seriously of how they like, be entertaining and informative um and, and a really you know even like you know just a, i thought that age storyline was really even looking back at it now it's handled really well and especially when you think about how groundbreaking it probably was at the time to have mm -hmm. a storyline like that which you know it wasn't it, now it would be commonplace it wasn't then yeah mm -hmm. i mean even the other the other one that someone just brought up here uh oh sherry brought it up the the valerie uh with the dad's mo yes. yeah 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 mm -hmm. valerie which one her the, father, her father oh yeah, her. yeah yeah well you know we, we kind of enriched her character but yeah yeah we knew it we always knew we had that you know we never really gave why val what happened to valerie and from buffalo why she came so we we, we knew we had it there was going to be a time we we're going to need to harvest that there will be a time we will need that to pull that in and we did and i had forgotten one of the mamas and the papas was in the I show. Know. I was going, oh my God. And I didn't get her autograph, Fred. Was Michelle <laughs> Phillips was in the show. And she was pretty good. I mean, uh, very good. I yeah. love the mamas and the papas. So that me was too. Like you know, we had we had her daughter in. Mackenzie Phillips was in the intervention episode. Yes. Yeah. And you know, I remember when we cast Michelle, it was a big deal. We, you know, we you know, we heard that she was available. We said, yes, yes. So we said yes, yes. And it was and she really held her own pretty good in some uh She's pretty, pretty yeah. harrowing stuff there, you know. I mean, she mm -hmm. gets accused yeah. of being, you know, the the mother who's letting her daughter be abused. I mean Yeah. I would love to cover that storyline at some point on this podcast. Yeah, I, you know, that was, yeah. that was pretty dynamite. And then you've got the We Interrupt This Program one. Yes, we're, yeah, we're going to, we are actually, yeah, you, you'll, you'll pop back in because we are, we are going to cover that. Yeah. We'd did love you talk to, to Trevor? Is he going to? Uh, yeah, Fred did the music for that one, actually, too. I did, yeah. yeah. And we Interrupt This Program. Yeah, which is a great, great episode. Yeah. I didn't need to skip over that. Melanie, do you have any other questions? Maybe a Zara I question? You got a Zara question? I do. Um, Zara was Zara had a few questions. Um, she, let's see. Um, were you? Well, we we covered most of those. Uh, yeah. uh, let's see. Uh, let's get back to Zara's and let's go to Omar first. He was okay. curious about your least favorite and your most favorite episodes. Hawaii, I imagine, was probably one of the top ones. That was definitely one of the top ones. I would say, uh, if I put Hawaii aside, I, I would say probably, oh my gosh, because you know they all go, blah, blah, blah. I would say the first one uh, was probably my least favorite. And I think the what, Unnecessary Roughness was the one when she yeah, goes you go home. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, th I think that would be probably my favorite because I got a lot more screen time than usual. And I just, you know, it was, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Melanie? Uh, well, Zara did want to ask the writers, why couldn't the writers have Brandon and Tracy being married and engaged instead of him and Kelly? Um, oh. Well, uh, you know, uh, we, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, it was always a possibility. Like I said, I did not come back after season seven, so I can't be responsible. You know, I, maybe <laughs> if, if I was coming back, I might have, you know, did another echo back with her, with her because, you know, Brandon, you know, that's what he really liked. A, a girl who kind of in a way was like his mother, you know, someone who's real. And so yeah. he's always going back. So Kelly, in a way, even though they are a perfect couple, but she's certainly not that because she's Beverly Hills too. But but when she's with him, she was always more decent. It felt like and more more, uh, you know, just more natural. So, so I don't know what to say there. I guess it just you know we had our stars and the stars had to be served, and that's you know again we talk about serving the show, and that's what we all eventually had to do. 
Yeah, and I think, right, I think that the fans, uh, sorry to jump in here, but I think the fans really were pulling for Kelly and Brandon to, you know, to be together eventually. Exactly, just like Donna and David, which we knew was right. part of the long game, and but we had to, you know, to get there, we had to do, you know, 64 episodes of, of not getting there, right. so so that's part of the, the fun of yeah. it, you know, it's a little bit mathematical. I, 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 did, I did score the night that they, uh, uh, he, that she lost her virginity. I know. And that was it. Uh, that was the last episode I wrote. And like like people who, who built the pyramids, I was killed. I was in tune. I, 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 it. Actually have, I, I actually had to have some involvement with Mr. Spelling because his daughter, he would couldn't control his daughter in, in uh, real life, but he could control her on TV. So the, the deflowering episode was discussed with the composer. How are you going to treat it? You know that kind of stuff. Interesting. Oh, wow. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to do a, we'll a, we'll do a show on gradu yeah, graduation day. We got to do a whole show on. That was, that was my tutorial. finest. That was my finest a cue, I think. It yeah. was a great cue, and uh, I've all. talked about that episode. I wrote that with Phil, and uh, and it was uh yeah that was a uh, you know the end of college. It was a lot of stuff going on, you know, including. We'll go. We'll get there. Me. Hey, uh, Jill, Kristen, who's a good friend of our show, she's in the. I think she's in the intro where she slept yeah, she with is. her friends. Yeah, um, uh, she wants to know where you think Jill would be. Uh, where do you think Tracy would be in twenty twenty? Um, I think that Tracy would be with her husband living on the Galleon Ranch. Why not? Taking care of her horses and Maybe. just living a good there. life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, Tracy asks us, what, what was it like working with Luke Perry? But he wasn't there at that time. I didn't work with Luke Perry. Um, and you know what? Um, just a, something on that. When Luke um, went into the hospital, I got a zillion texts. Oh my gosh, we're so sorry. We're do and I had to tell everybody, guys, I didn't work with him. I didn't know him. Yeah. And it was so sad, but I didn't, I, yeah. Well, how about this? Uh, yeah. Speaking of him, you said you were a Dylan girl, right? Growing up. I think, I, you know, I don't, I, I really honestly don't remember. I like, I always did like the bad boys. So I probably yeah. was more on Dylan, but then Dylan left and. I guess as a know. fan of the series, what did you yeah. like about, uh, about Dylan, I guess. I, 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 the bad boy image, you know, the motorcycle, the coolness. Um, I heard Christine talking about the, the whispering. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I mean, he was just cool and sexy, you know, he just. I'm going to ask up. Amy that question too about Luke. What did you love about his performances? Well, I mean, I definitely think it's that bad boy with a heart of gold, right? Like that, he kind of, he kind of, epitomize that character yeah. that we've seen. I think we played so many times since since he kind of made Dylan McKay. Uh, well, he, he with the writers of the show kind of created this character. Um, I well, I just think he was one just gorgeous, and he was just. I mean, I still think about that try. You know, the love triangle when he goes to Kelly's. I think it's time I started seeing you. Like, still one of the best moments of television like, ever. There was just something he just really had that. I think it's not something you see on TV that often. He really had that like spark and that. Um, like sexiness that was really just translated through the screen, you know, and I just, you don't see it that often. He just like, there was a vivaciousness to his performance that, um, and he really just, I don't know. I just, I, he was just, I don't think there's that many, there has not been that many characters like him. I think that had such a um, impact uh, on a show and on a, that, you know, they could create such an iconic character that this many years later, when I, I can still like think about like, when, you know, I, the chills I got there, you see, you know, because it was just so great. I, it was just something about the character and the writing and the performance where it all kind of came together. And I don't think that always happens, that kind of magic combination where the performance and the writing are there. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I wanted to say something about to Amy, you know, Amy, what grade were you in when you won our super fan contest in 1996? That's a different, that's actually not me. That's a different that was Amy. You? Oh, no, I would oh, love okay. to have won the super. I would have loved oh. to have won the super. Oh, I always thought that was you. Okay. <laughs> no, that wasn't me. But it was probably so, no. I wasn't. I actually, um, I was. I would was started watching the show just as a fan, and then I became. I started becoming a television reporter, a television critic, TV critic, and so I, I covered the show oh, professionally. Yeah, yeah. Too. Yeah, so I covered the show professionally. So I think we started communicating when. I was writing about the show, and I, that's we, what it was. Yeah, I knew we had a long communication. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, de yeah, definitely. But yeah, yeah. I was—I mean, I was a super fan of the show, and I will take that title proudly. Yeah. Yes, I was, I was yeah. Board. Got to look for the other Amy. You know, yeah. she's in Massachusetts. Also, she was. Yeah. In oh, really? oh, yeah, really? that's why I was confused. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. 
Melanie, do you have any more? I'm gonna let you go with one more question and then we'll kind of wrap up here. Yeah, uh, Chase was wondering, did you still continue watching the show after you left? Hmm. Good question. No, I did not. Wow. No, I did not. Yeah. I didn't. Okay. Fred didn't probably. I think either. a lot of us did. No, <laughs> yeah. No, I, can, I have to say, I did not see one single episode after I left. Okay. That's I think okay. I was too. It was. It hurt too much. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. And I one, one more quick thing too. Um, you had mentioned yeah. before we started that you're teaching theater now, yes. and um, one of our fans, Alicia Bogner, was curious if uh, fans of the show in general still recognize you, and then also, um, you know, your theater students. Do you draw on your experience in your teaching as well? Oh, uh, definitely, uh, definitely, I do draw on my experience, um, and. You know, most of most of my kids, it's, it was so long ago that they don't really know. But um, last year at open house night, I had one of the moms. Oh my God, not a two hours late. I remember that awesome. myself. So it does happen sometimes. Yes, when I was on the show, was I was like anywhere I went, because it, it, like that's the show is so popular that anywhere I went, I would get recognized. And of course I was also with Tori a lot of the time. So that way, you know, but, but even when I was by myself, I got recognized all the time because it was such a popular show. Nowadays it's like, yeah, it's those women that were that <laughs> right age, you know, that watched it and they still, yes, they definitely still remember me. And my kids, my, my students are not that impressed. They're a little impressed. I think they try to hide it. You know, right. what I was telling Pete, but I was telling you guys before is, the thing that really was my claim to fame was kissing Brad Pitt. And, you know, that was like one of my first TV shows. And that was before he was famous. And anytime anybody hears that, it just like goes around the school like so <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, Miss Novick made out with Brad Pitt. You know? <laughs> That's a good one though. Yeah. Very yes. cool. All right, listen guys, I want to say this. Uh, hey, Larry, yes. October 4th, 2020. We're gonna be the super show. We're doing the super show. It's a 30th anniversary premiere date. It's going to be big. Uh, we're going to have everyone who's ever been on the, sh the podcast we're, and we're gonna come in and, and, and we're going to invite them at one point to jump on. We've got uh, section leaders. We're going to look at you, Amy, for helping us out on this date. So it's a, yeah. a Sunday. Maybe you'll run the critic segment. We're doing a breaking <laughs> out. We've got like uh, you know, Brandon's girlfriend segment, which uh, we've got a the critic segment. We've got some fan uh, fan yeah. form segments. We were going to do a Canadian mafia segment, but then there was a problem or something. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. We have a meet the parents. We'll, we'll have like you know the Eckhouse and Potter and and Catherine That's awesome. Cannon. Yeah, so we got to just be a big celebration for, for that for three hours from from. Uh, uh, Four to yeah. seven uh, Pacific. So make sure everybody who's listening to this or watching it wherever you're doing podcasts, save that date. And it's going to be between 4 and 7 p.m. Pacific, 7 to 10 Eastern. We are still planning it. And we have a lot more episodes coming up before that happens. Um, right next week, we'll be back on Wednesday. And Chuck and I and Karen are talking about Isn't It Romantic and Slumber Party. So that should Lovely. be... People a lot of fun. It. And then next Friday, we're back here again. And we're talking One Wedding and a Funeral. And one episode. Yeah. One episode. One Wedding and a Funeral with Rebecca Gayhart and the director of the episode, James Whitmore Jr. And wow. the costumer who made the wedding dress, Molly Campbell. That should be pretty interesting. So that should be. Um, obviously, that episode, You we all, everyone knows that one. And, you know, everyone loves that couple, you know. Yeah, Tony. So we're really happy that uh, that's going to happen. Yes. So listen, I love you. I'm all about gratitude these days. For Fred, I want to tell you, uh, man, thank you for all the score work that you did on this show. So many of the emotional moments and connections that we have, particularly in this season, uh, came from you and came from uh, what you delivered. Uh, it's really, really incredible stuff. And I think the world of Larry, so uh, by default, I think the world of you. <laughs> And uh, for for Jill, I mean, just such an incredible work in this this season and that's in that series. Uh, the stuff that you did with Jason was just absolutely beautiful, and you brought so much honesty and realness uh, to this character and to the show. Uh, it, and I think it definitely needed it at that. Mm -hmm. 
So, hey, yeah. guys, thanks so much for uh, listening and watching us. Thanks this a lot, Amy. Thanks back. a lot, Melanie. Thank you. Thanks, Next everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pam. You're welcome. Thank you. Stay tuned. All right. See you guys. Bye-bye.